Hello and welcome to my live broadcast. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. I hope everyone is doing okay. God bless you and your families in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me know if you can hear me. Is my sound loud and clear? Give me one if you can hear me. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. God bless you. Today, we are going to do another, Lord willing, another amazing live show. And the topic of today is Muhammad, the prophet of Satan. Yes, you heard it correctly. Muhammad, the prophet of Satan. And we have more than enough evidence and proof to show you that Muhammad actually has nothing to do with God. Allah is no one else but Satan himself in disguise. And we know that Satan is a shapeshifter. He can come in the form of an angel, right? And we are going to prove to you that <clears throat> Muhammad was approached by a Satan. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button like it's possessed by a gen smash it destroy it and also don't forget to click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload new videos so before we start i want to say it's showtime welcome everybody god bless you one of our dear brothers on Discord made this background uh, for me uh, in Photoshop. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your support, for your believing me as a teacher and one of your friends and brothers in Christ. Guys, thank you for joining and thank you for your support. Let us start. Before we start, guys, I want you to pray with me in, our, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ so he can guide us through today's live broadcast pray with me in the name of Jesus Christ Lord please forgive our daily sins please guide us to learn how to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son Jesus Christ Please, Lord, enfold us in your arms. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the courage and wisdom to overcome lies, taqiyya, and deceptions. Lord, guide us through your Holy Spirit. Give us some wisdom. Give us some guidance that we might reflect your light also in this dark world and that we speak your word without any shame with boldness lord and draw others to your feet we ask this through your beloved son our lord and savior jesus christ please lord please give us the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done in the name of jesus we pray amen amen guys welcome god bless guys on this live broadcast today we will have the opportunity to talk about the prophet of satan also known as muhammad last but not least when i finish my today's teaching we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. Hopefully, we will have also Muslims who will call us live on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christians, the Rob Christian without any separation. The Rob Christian. Maybe if we have an admin, uh, he can provide my Skype ID in the live chat. So I hope that Muslims will then call me live to refute me, to refute my today's topic and teaching. 
so <clears throat> let us start guys yesterday we mentioned how islam is nothing but a pagan cult with allah and his three daughters Allat, al uzza wal manad and as you see this is a historical finding you see the symbol the horns of satan the symbol of the moon idol that muslims still have everywhere especially on their mosques right even ramadan is based on the crescent moon right on the moon everything in islam is about the moon idol right islam is nothing but a cult exactly for truth so we mentioned that yesterday we also showed you how Saudi Arabians, the Saudi Arabians, they built one of the largest uh, towers, uh, a hotel, and as you see, here's the Kaaba, and this is, you know, the devil horns <laughs> is looking, watching over the Kaaba of Satan, and in this case, Allah, right? And Muslims are proud about it, right? So the crescent moon in Mecca, as you see here in front of you, the star and crescent was the emblem of the Ottoman Empire, the symbol of Satan, symbol of Islam. The crescent moon carving, we found a really old carving in stone, as you see, of the solar star deity Baal. Baal is Allah, Baal is Satan, right? Another name for the moon idol, Allah. As a disc in a crescent Luciferian symbol. The symbol of Satan himself, as you see. You see the similarities, guys? So, we also mentioned yesterday that Muslims not only worship Satan in the form of Allah, we also showed you that they have to glorify and worship Muhammad every morning and evening, right? And we taught you that Muslims have to believe in Allah and Muhammad and everything in according to Arabic grammar rules for sentences, everything that comes after the last person, which is in this case Muhammad, the Rasul, the messenger, everything that follows is for him. So you have to respect him, you have to assist him, honor him. And you have to glorify who? You have to glorify Muhammad. Right? You have to glorify according to the Quran. This is Quran, guys. Don't blame me. This is the Quran of, uh, of uh, Allah, Satan, who commands Muslims to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Right? What so, Who? The Rasul, right? What to sabbihuhu, glorify the messenger, right? Glorify the messenger of Allah, the Satan. So as you see, according to this ayah, and this is the most devastating ayah that I can find in the Quran, guys. I kid you not. Let me give you the link. Let me give you the link. Chapter 48. Guys, take notes, copy, copy it, bookmark it, do whatever you need to do. This is the most damaging ayah that you can find in the Quran. To show you that Muslims are forced, are commanded to glorify Muhammad, to glorify the messenger of Satan, Allah. Right? Use it, guys. Bookmark it, save it, use it. This is the ayah to show Muslims that Islam is nothing but a blasphemy cult. Making Muhammad equal with Allah. Did you catch it? God bless you too, uh, Lydia. God bless you too. Welcome. Do you see it, guys? Do you see the blasphemy, the shirk? That Allah and Muhammad are actually equal? If they are Arabic speaking Christians or Muslims in the chat, the proof is in front of you. You have to 
worship and glorify Muhammad, right? Glorifying God is an act of worship, glorification, right? Act of worship. Did you catch it? Thank you. So, this is chapter 48, ayah 9. Clear proof that Allah and Muhammad <clears throat> are equal. So, let us start today's teaching, guys. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. This is hadith number... Let me scroll down. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6982. Let me give you the link. Please keep our admins in your prayers, guys. They are doing an amazing job as always. I really cannot thank them enough. They are really doing an amazing job. Phil and many others. So if we read this hadith from Aisha, from Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, the commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's messenger was in the form of good righteous dreams in his sleep. Oof, 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 what a nice story, what Christian prince have said. Divine inspiration? Let's see if this is divine inspiration, guys. He never had a dream, but that came true like bright daylight. He used to go in seclusion to the cave Hira, where he used to worship Allah. Muslims question. Muhammad already worshipped Allah before he did get divine inspiration. So clearly Muhammad was a worshipper of the pagan moon idol Allah before <laughs> the real Allah, right? <laughs> You see, Muhammad was a nice little pagan. He used to go to the cave Hira, right? Cave Hira, which is in nowadays, basically, Saudi Arabia, right? And he used to go there and worship the moon idol, the supreme moon idol of the pagans, Allah, who has three daughters, Allah, Al-Uzza, wal Manat, and his wife, the son, Akbar, right? Allah, who? And Akbar, Allah, the moon idol, the supreme moon idol, and his wife, and his three bird idols, daughters, Allah, al uzza wal manat So he was a nice little pagan, right? You see, it's, uh, the proof is in front of you, right? You can't say Rob Christian is lying, right? A nice little pagan worshipper of Allah, the moon idol. So he did that, he, he kept worshipping the moon idol for many nights in that cave of Hira. Did you catch it? He used to take with him the journey food for that stay and then come back to his wife Khadija. So every time Muhammad and stayed there for a period of time, period of days, period of nights, staying alone. You know, to hopefully receive something from Allah, the moon idol. Did you catch it? As you see, the proof is that Muhammad really wanted to get so-called divine inspiration from the moon idol Allah because he was worshipping the moon idol, right? So Khadija gave him some food and he kept staying there, right? He went back and forth like a nice little pagan boy, right? Then, according to Aisha, right? The so-called angel came, so we're going to prove to you that later, that this so-called angel is nothing but the Satan, Satan called Al-Abyad, the white one. Al-Abyad, the white one. Remember the name, Al-Abyad. In Arabic, Al-Abyad means the white, Al-Abyad, right? So this so-called angel, we know it's a demon, came to him in it and asked him to read, right? So this angel, this so-called angel, 
forced Muhammad to read. So the Prophet replied, so Muhammad replied, I cannot read. You know, this is a false translation, right? Muhammad said, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read. Not, I don't know how to read. This is false translation. You know how Muslims lie in their translations, right? So then this so-called angel <laughs> caught Muhammad forcefully. You see, he started to attack him, violent, using violence. Question Muslims, why in the Bible, when a real angel came to people, he and the angel would have always said, I come in peace. Why didn't the so-called angel say, Salamu alaikum, ya Muhammad. Peace be upon you. Did the so-called angel say that? No, he started immediately to manhandle Muhammad. Uh-oh. Oof, oof, oof. Where's Christian Prince? When you need him. So this demon, this al abyad demon, this, the white one, al abyad started to immediately manhandle Muhammad, squeezing him like a grape. So he kept pressing him hard. An angel of God pressing in a servant, a, a man, using force, using violence? That doesn't make sense. Show me one prophet who had the same encounter in the Bible. If we go to the Bible, we will see that an angel always comforts people. He says, I come in peace. Salamu alayki ya Maryam. Right? Peace be upon you. Mary, right? Salamu alayku. Salamu alayki. Salam alayk. Right? Salamu alayka. Peace be upon you. Did the so called angel say that? No. He never comforted Muhammad. So then the so called angel released Muhammad. And again, forced him to read. Iqra, read. Wassalamu alaikum, my Rob. You see? So, the so called angel again forcing Muhammad. And then Muhammad again replying, I cannot read. And again, false translation. I cannot read. Ma ana biqari. I cannot read. Whereupon, again, where's the comfort? Where's the peace from the so-called angel? He, again, this creature, this demon started to manhandle Muhammad and squeezing Muhammad for the second time, like a grape. Right? Uh-oh. This is, this, is uh, this is an angel doing this? Poor Muhammad. Lord knows what this demon was doing more than squeezing. Lord knows what happened in that cave, right? <laughs> Lord have mercy. What a beautiful story. Till Muhammad saying, till I cannot bear it anymore. So Muhammad was really scared to death that he will die from the attack from this so-called angel <laughs> he was actually thinking that he would die from all that squeezing right then the creature released muhammad and asked him to again read Iqra. read again for the third time read 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 but again i replied and muhammad answers Ma ana biqari. i cannot read and here guys to show you that they are lying in the translation, here they try to, between brackets, they try to fix, you know, they, they basically uh, busted themselves in the translation. Why? Because look what it says. Or, or, what shall I read? You see, Muhammad is asking, what shall I read? So Muhammad could actually read. But there is, was nothing to read from. So Muhammad could read and write very well. He said, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read because there is nothing to read from. What shall I read? You see, Muslims have always lied to you. 
saying that Muhammad was illiterate. No, 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 Habibi, no. Muhammad could write and read very well. And that other day we showed you proof some, from the same Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, that Muhammad can write and read because he was asking for a pen and paper. And if our admin, you can give them the link to that hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari proving that Muhammad could write and read very well. So, thereupon he caught me for the third time, for the third, so, you know, guys, it's not enough to squeeze him once or twice. He needs, Muhammad is so stupid, he needs to be squeezed for a third time. I mean, if this is a so-called angel from God, guys, question, think with me here. If this was a so-called angel from God, and Muhammad was a donkey, not a, not a human being, a donkey, if that was a donkey sitting in that cave, Muhammad, he, Allah would have already made him start to read, right? Where's the, where's the miracle here, guys? I mean, if it's a donkey and it's God, God, if Allah has the power, he would have made him read, right? Right? He would have made him read. So, three times and Muhammad still saying, I cannot read, right? And then pressed him again, squeezing him like a grape, right? And then released Muhammad and said, again, read, iqra, read, right? In the name of your Lord who has created that all exists, has created a man from blood clot, dead blood. So actually, guys, only in Islam, Muslims have to believe that they are basically zombies because they are created from congealed blood. You know, when you have, uh, let's say you have a wound, you know, and the blood starts to become uh, like a uh, darker, you know, it becomes, the blood starts to congeal. It's congealed, right? That's what you call it in English. That's what it is. Congealed, that, it's dead blood. It becomes darker, uh, it, it, you know, it takes themselves, so, uh, I'm sorry guys for my English. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? It becomes dark, it becomes stronger, it's not uh, very liquid anymore. That's what congealed cl blood clot is. Dead blood. So according to, <laughs> and this is, by the way, guys, an ayah from the Quran. So according to Muslims, they are created from dead blood. The walking dead, that's what Muslims are. Zombies, yes, exactly. Zombies, they are nothing but zombies. I mean, where is the sperm? Where is the, the egg? I think Allah was so hungry, he ate the egg of the woman. He ate it. He made himself a nice breakfast. You have frozen blood, basically. Yeah, Manita, you got it. You got it, day. You understood what I'm trying to say, right? Are you following me, guys? Give me one if you're still with me. So, you know, this, this doesn't make sense. This is clear proof that the one who wrote the Quran is nothing but a scam, a liar and a deceiver, right? Then Allah's messenger returned when the so-called inspiration, his neck muscles twitching. <coughs> cover me, cover me Khadija, I saw a demon, cover me. <coughs> yeah, sorry, sorry guys. You know, I just, you know, it felt like I was in that same story, you know, I had to, yeah. So, with terror, you know, twitching with terror. Oh, man. Oh, man. This really sounds like a, someone, who, who was the one saying Halloween? You know, this sounds like a Halloween story, guys. Right? Who was the one mentioning Halloween, man? How dare you to talk about Halloween story about Muhammad, man. How dare you, you filthy kafir. Anyway, so they covered him <laughs> till his fee was over. And then he said, oh Khadija, what's wrong with me? Khadija, Khadija. what's wrong with me, man? Then he told her everything what happened and said, 
I fear something may happen to me. Now, if you go back to the early biography by Ibn Hisham, Ibn Ishaq, guys, the bi biography of the life of Muhammad, about the life of Muhammad, it's called Sira Nabawiya. Muhammad actually saying, and not many Muslims know about this, Muhammad saying, a demon touched me. I was approached by a demon. Guys, the first feeling is always right, right? And who told him it's not a demon? So why is Khadija saying never? Because Muhammad said, a demon approached me. Shaitan, right? And Khadija replying, never, it's not a demon, right? This is why she's saying uh, never, right? Why is she saying never? Guys, did you catch it? Why is Khadija saying never? Question to the audience. Why would Khadija reply never? Anyone? Why would Khadija say never? Iblis, exactly, Dark Knight. It's Iblis. So Khadija saying, no, no, it's not Iblis, it's not Satan. Question. I know I have a lot of, lot of questions, guys. I know. I, you know, when I was young, my, I was driving my mom crazy. Always asking questions, man. I'm, I mean, that's me. What can I do, man? Allah made me do this. Asking questions about everything. So why is Khadija saying never? Why? Because Muhammad clearly told her, I saw Satan, right? I saw a demon. So, how can Khadija say never? Did she see the creature that appeared to Muhammad? No. So, how can she say never? Uh-oh. So clearly, guys, Islam is created on the assumption of Khadija. She is the one making Muhammad believe that he is actually a true prophet. It's all about Khadija. Islam is created on the belief of Khadija. Did you catch it? Assumption. On top of assumption. So Islam is nothing but an assumption of Khadija, guys. Khadija actually, there are many stories about Khadija. Khadija really hoped that her husband would become a prophet of the nation of the Arabs. Because the Arabs, remember, they didn't have a prophet like the Jews, like the Christians, right? So Khadija, she was the richest lady in Mecca, right? And she really hoped that her husband became a prophet. So it was, you know, it was an inside job. Invention, fabrication, right? This is why she was helping him to go to Cave Hira, right? Remember? She is the one tr telling him, go there. Maybe you will receive something. So it was all about the planning of Khadija. This lady had major planning to do, right? Power, exactly. To control the Arab world. If you have money, you have power, you're going to try anything to keep that power. To keep the control over the Arabs. And she was the richest lady. She was basically the king, the queen of Mecca, right? Her father was the richest guy. Remember the story how she made her daddy drunk? to marry Muhammad because her dad didn't want to wanted to give her to Muhammad to marry Muhammad her dad said you know I don't want to marry you to this poor guy Muhammad so she lied yeah exactly she deceived her dad she made him drunk and the next morning when her dad woke up he found her that she was married to Muhammad right right so Islam is created actually because of Khadija. She wanted Muhammad to become a prophet. Right? No, uh, Karian, Khadija is the cousin of Waraka, not Muhammad, right? We actually believe there's a big chance that her cousin, Waraka, is the real father of Muhammad. 
I challenge any Muslim, guys. Look at my challenge. I challenge any Muslim to prove to me that Abdullah is the real father of Muhammad. I challenge you. But that's an off-topic challenge. So, so Khadija is saying never. How do you know Khadija? Did you see the, prof uh, the angel? No. How do you know it's not a demon Khadija? Come on Khadija. Any Muslim? Any Muslim? Hmm? How does she know? Did she see Jibreel? No. So, but have the glide tidings for, by Allah, will never disgrace you. How do you know that, Khadija? I mean, guys, according to Khadija, Muhammad is a prophet because he is very nice. He's very kin. He speaks the truth. I mean, I know a lot of people who speak the truth. I know a lot of people who are really nice. I know a lot of people who help the poor, right? I know a lot of people who serve their guests generously, right? I know a lot of people like that. I mean, are those people now prophets? Does this make you a prophet, guys? <laughs> so according to Khadija, Muhammad is a prophet because he's so nice. He's so good to his fellow friends, right? Khadija then accompanied him to her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfal. So Khadija is the cousin of Waraka. Did you catch it? And if we pay attention, actually Waraka is from the family called Abdul Uzza, right? Abdul Uzza. What is Abdul? Abdul, what's Abdul, guys? Thank you for your donations, guys. Thank you very much. God bless you. We appreciate it. God bless you and your families. What is an Abdul? Abdul is a slave of. Thank you. Slave of. God bless you too, my friend. God bless you too. Slave of Al Uzza. So, this guy, the cousin of Khadija, he is from the family of the slaves of Al Uzza. Who is Al Uzza? One of the daughters of Allah. Right? Alat Al Uzza Wal Manat. The three bird idols, daughters of Allah. Did you catch it? So they were all pagans. All of them were pagans. Right? And they have to lie. And they have to call Waraka the Muslims to make it, you know, sound like, you know, you know, this guy's a Christian. He has nothing to do with Christianity. And I'm going to prove it to you. So this guy, Waraka, was the son of her paternal uncle, i.e. her father's brother. Who, during the pre-Islamic period, became a Christian. So according to the translation, guys, Waraka was a Christian. Challenge Muslims. Thank you for the donations, guys. God bless you and your families. We appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. So, challenge to the Muslims who are listening and watching. I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the word Christian in the original Arabic of this hadith. I challenge you for a thousand dollars. You see how they need to fix the translate with the translation? Lying. It doesn't say Christian. Right? It says Tanassara. That means he became a Nasrani. Last time I checked, we Arabic speaking Christian. I'm an Arabic speaker. I'm a Christian from the Middle East. There is no Christian in the Arabic uh, sorry in the Middle East who will call himself a Nasrani. We are Masihiyun. So, Waraka, it says in the Arabic, Tanassara. Tanassara. Did you catch it? I just showed you the word, right? Let me go back. You see it? This is the word. Tanassara. We Christians, we call ourselves Masihiyun or Masihiyin, right? Depends on how you use it in a sentence. I'm a Masihi. Anna, I. Anna, Masihi. I'm a Christian. 
right? So how did this guy, how, how are they lying? Look how they are lying to you guys. So if you don't know Arabic, you are deceived. There's nothing called Christian. So this guy was a Nasrani. He was a cult guy. You know, there's nothing called Christian here in the text, right? Lying, filthy lying scumbags when they translate. Did you catch it? You can never, this is clear proof that you can never ever trust a Muslim with translation. Don't trust any translation if you don't have an Arabic guy like me. Don't trust any translation done by Muslims like this one. False translation. Filthy lying scumbags. Muslims have no shame when they translate the Quran or Hadith. And the proof is in front of you. Did you catch it? We have a Muslim calling, I think. Let's see. Hello? Hello again. Hello, welcome. Thank you for having me back. Yo, what's I, uh, up, my friend? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, my friend. Thank you. MashaAllah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I want to clarify my position because I know you're reading from Sony books and I'm not going to dig into that. Yeah, you're, you're Shia, right, my friend? So, yes. Yeah, you yes, said it wow. earlier. I'm, did I? Yeah, oh, you, I you, you, yeah, you told me before that you were Shia. Okay. Yeah, we spoke I'm, earlier. I'm, right? glad, yeah. I'm glad I did. Yeah. What uh, do you want to say? Some, what do you want to say, my friend? Some questions from the Bible, if you wouldn't mind. Um, my friend, the topic about today is not the Bible. So why? You no, 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 no. It has nothing to do with necessarily the Bible itself. But since you're claiming that the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is Satan, yeah. No, I no, no, no. I didn't say Muhammad is Satan. I said Muhammad is the Prophet of Satan. Okay, Prophet of Satan. Well, yeah. isn't it a little worse if, if somebody is Satan? You know, you are, if you are a prophet of Satan, you are a worshipper of Satan, right? You are not Satan himself, right? But isn't Satan worse than his own prophet? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I is, is the, sure. is, so you are basically a servant of Satan, and that's what we are trying to prove today from the Islamic books. Okay. That's, I uh, mean, well, from Sunni books, but yes. No, no, not Sunni books. We, we can prove it also from the Quran. And I'm not done teaching, right? So... Yeah, 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 it's fine. You can, okay. if you want to call me back, and well, yeah, I is it okay, inform. my friend? Is it okay? Um, can can I can I ask you something? If you can uh, be respectful, you know, I really sound. I'm I, not we going call, to insult anybody. No, no, no. I'm, I know, I know, my friend. You really. Uh, we spoke earlier. I respect you for calling. I respect you that you are really a respectful guy. So, if is it okay with you that when I'm finished teaching, you call me back? Is that okay? No problem. No oh, problem. all right. I just. All I right. just wish to speak with you because unfortunately there's not sure. many you're always, to speak to on a regular basis. No, you are you're always welcome to call my friend. Thank you very much. And you oh. are my brother in humanity and Thank according you. to the Quran, I'm told to respect you with the highest amount of respect. Thank as well you. as my Imams, they told me to respect you beyond. Yeah. Well, so, uh, my friend, the Quran doesn't say to respect uh, Christians, but you know, we can talk about that later, okay? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, oh, no right. problem. Oh, okay. Uh, Talk, I'll talk up with you after. Uh, well, will you make sure to call me? Because I might forget to call you. Okay. Add me, add me uh, so that I will see your uh, see okay. your message. Or send me a message, I will call you, okay? Okay, inshallah. That sounds oh, perfect. Okay. okay. Speak to you later, my friend. All right. Bye bye. 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 So, guys, um, <clears throat> let us continue, okay? So, this guy sounds like a really respectful Muslim, and I respect that, you know? I mean, we are all human beings, you know, and I think this guy is unfortunately um, a victim of Islam. And when you are respectful, I mean, why should I treat you not with respect, right? I mean, if you're going to insult and whatnot, that's a different story. But this guy seems really like a really nice guy. And I like that, right? We're all humans, right? After all, we're all humans. We are, like he said, we are brothers in humanity. And I hope that someday he will realize that Islam is not the way. Islam is not the truth. And maybe he will... I, ho I have hope for everyone, right? Maybe he will... Uh, one day... He sounds like a really young guy. Maybe one day he will leave Islam and accept Jesus Christ 
as his Lord and Savior, right? Exactly, Liz. Why not, right? <clears throat> so, he said, by the way, he said that the Quran teaches him, uh, you know, to respect Christians. Well, <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> but hopefully, when we call him back after we're done teaching, we're going to show him that's not true. Anyway, so, if we continue, guys, if you continue reading, sorry for, uh, you know, anyway. So, according to this translation, which, which is a lie, he was not a Christian, he was a Nasrani, Waraka, right? Remember. And he used, Waraka used to write the Arabic writing and used to write the gospel in Arabic. Did you catch it? So according to this Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, Sahih hadith, Waraka, guys, Waraka had access to the gospel, to the Injil. Remember? The gospel in Arabic is called Injil, and Injil is a Greek word, right? Injil is a Greek word. I wonder why Allah used the Greek word in his Quran, but you know, that's a topic for another time. So, clearly, in the time of Muhammad and Waraka, the Injil was not corrupted. Did you catch it? Because he was translating from the Injil. And the Injil was in Aramaic. Did you catch it? This guy, Waraka, could write and read Aramaic. So he was translating the Injil for Muhammad. And he used to give verses from the Injil to Muhammad so that Muhammad can use them in his Quran. Did you catch it? Exactly. Injil is not an Arabic word. It's a Greek word. So why is Allah using a Greek word in his Arabic Quran, right? So as you see, they always say the Injil is corrupted. Well, clearly, the Injil was not corrupted in the time of Muhammad. <laughs> and don't forget, the Injil in the Aramaic language, and also, of course, in the original Greek, used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea. So people used to come with the Injil in a book form, in Aramaic, in, in Greek. And, you know, because Waraka was very rich, like his cousin Khadija, he had access to these books. And clearly these books were translations from the uh, Greek to the Aramaic. So why do you Muslims are such hypocrites saying that the Injil is corrupted? When did the Injil got corrupted liars? So clearly your prophet and the cousin of the wife of your prophet, Waraka, had access to the uncorrupted Injil in Aramaic and he was translating them to Arabic. Uh-oh. You filthy scumbags. Liars and deceivers. Right? And the Quran never made the claim that the Injil is corrupted. Right? Anyway. Anyway. So, question Muslims. I have, you know, I'm full of questions today, guys. What can I do? I love to ask questions. Right? Since when? Or when did Waraka become a prophet, guys? As you see here in front of you. As much as Allah wished him to write. So, Allah was talking to... Waraka? No? Allah was talking to Waraka? Uh oh. Seems that Waraka was a prophet before Muhammad. But Muhammad said, there was no prophet between me and Isa. Uh oh. I mean, if you talk to Allah, are you a prophet or not? You are, right? You're a messenger, right? You are putting the message of Allah on paper, right? He's writing. Uh oh. So Muhammad clearly lied here according to this hadith. Seems that Waraka was another prophet in Islam. Sounds like a scam, exactly. Oops. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another question. Yeah, I know guys, I ask a lot of questions. He was an old man and had lost his eyesight. Uh-oh. How can a blind man write... Gospels in Arabic. Disaster upon disaster. 
upon disaster. No, no, Bali Regal. There is nothing called Nasara. Nasra, Nasara are not Christians. A Christian in Arabic is Masihi. Ana Masihi. I'm a Christian. Nasara were a sect that were killed and basically got extinct by Muhammad himself. He killed them. He expelled them from Mecca and Medina, right? There is nothing called Nasara anymore. Right? They they don't exist. Have you ever have you ever seen a guy calling himself Nasara in 2019? Have you ever seen someone calling himself Nasara? I don't. I'm from the Middle East. I've never seen a guy in the Middle East calling himself Nasara or Nasrani. Nasara guys is plural. Nasrani is singular one guy right so there's nothing called nasar we are messiahiyin or messiahiyun depends on how you write it down in a sentence right i'm a messiahi and a messiahi right thank you phil herrera exactly so like i said question how can a blind man write something down that doesn't make sense this, you see this whole guys this whole hadith is scam lies upon lies clearly the guy who put this hadith as you see it here in front of you he was a scam like his prophet invention fabrication this whole hadith guys is you, you see how many questions i have been asking during reading this hadith Disaster upon disaster. Fabrications, you see? And don't forget, Sahih al-Bukhari is the second most important book after the Quran. Yes, exactly, Tati. Yes, you're correct. Tati Avanus. Yes. Yes. Muhammad had access to the translations of the Injil, of the Gospels, because Waraka was helping him, and this is why Muhammad was copy-pasting verses from the Injil in the Quran. This is why you see so many verses copied from the Injil, from our Injil. Right? Disaster upon disaster. So then Khadija, guys, so Khadija brought Muhammad to her cousin and she said to him, Oh, my cousin, Waraka. So Khadija is saying, Oh, Waraka, listen to the story of your nephew, to the story of Muhammad. Waraka asked, Oh, my nephew, Oh, Muhammad, what have you seen? So he's asking him, What have you seen? The Prophet Muhammad replying, described whatever he had seen. Waraka said, this is the same Namus. Guys, question, what is Namus? What is Namus? Anyone? Anyone? Namus, law of who? The law of who? The law of who? The law that was given from God to Moses. Did you catch it? So, guys, Waraka never said, Waraka never said this is Jibreel, like the Muslims love to tell you. You know, this is, you know, the whole story is a fabrication, right? Waraka never said this is Jibreel. You see, everything that you see, see between the brackets is a lie. This is a big lie. You see why you cannot trust translation? Whenever you see something between brackets, like this, see that? Don't trust it. This is why I don't like to read this, because it's not here. It's not here. Right? Exactly. Everything that you see between brackets, it's not there. The translator is putting it. This is the words of this translator. Liar, deceiver. Trying to sugarcoat what the actual Arabic says, right? So, let me go back. So, Waraka says, this is the same Namus 
whom Allah had sent to Moses. So the laws that were given to Moses, i.e. i.e. the 600 plus laws, right? The 600, how many laws are there in the Old Testament, guys, again? Around 600 plus, right? If not, I'm not mistaken. The mosaic, mosaic laws, right? 613, thank you, guys. Yeah, laws is namus in Arabic. Right? You see? So, Waraka didn't say this is Jibreel. You filthy liars. You Muslims have truly no shame when you say Waraka said this must be Jibreel. You see, guys? The proof is in front of you. Namus. He said this is Namus. What a lying, filthy people they are, man. Right? Let me continue. I wish I were young and could live up the time when your people would turn you out. Allah's messenger asked, will they turn me out? Blah, blah. You know, you can read this. It's a very long hadith and I don't want to waste my time reading the entire hadith. But basically, the story, if we keep going just to read the last part. <clears throat> Uh, this is very important stuff, this part I want to share with you because you know, we will see that Muhammad was a mentally ill guy. So what happened? Muhammad's nephew, Waraka, you know, the cousin of his wife, Waraka died after a couple of days. You see that? And the divine inspiration was also passed for a while. Question to the audience. Do you find something fishy here? You know, I love to ask questions, right? Remember? My middle name is Rob, the questioner, Christian. Right? Rob, the questioner, Christian. That's my middle name from now on. What's the fishy part here, guys? Question, what's the fishy part? Is there something fishy? What's that? Help me to help you. What is so fishy about this, guys? Yeah. The source of inspiration dies. Frog, you just hit the jackpot. Boom, that's it. So, clearly, because remember, Waraka was translating, right? He was translating. Right? He was translating from the Ara Aramaic to Arabic, right? Did you catch it? He was copying, translating from our gospel that is not corrupted. <laughs> so this guy dies, right? The guy dies and suddenly <laughs> the so-called divine inspiration stops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So clearly Waraka is the source of the Quran. He was helping Muhammad fabricating Quranic ayahs. Boom! On your face, Muslims. And the proof is in front of you. Any Christian in the chat who wants to say the Shahada, I mean, come on, this must be clear evidence that Islam and the Quran is from Allah, from the God, right? Uh-oh. Anyone wants to say the Shahada? Come on, now it's the chance. I mean, it's now or never, right? <laughs> oh, man. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Disaster upon disaster. You see that? Phony prophet. Phony prophet, scammer. And then because the source of the Quran, Waraka died, he was the guy who was giving him ayahs, basically. Because he died, 
Muhammad became so sad. Poor Muhammad. And what did Muhammad wanted to do? Muhammad wanted to throw himself from the tops of the high mountains. Question. Another, I know, another question. What can we do? Question to the Muslims. If I'm Muhammad and I go see a doctor and I say, Oh doctor, I'm suicidal like Muhammad. I'm suicidal. What will the doctor say to me? Let me subscribe for you some medicine because you there's something wrong with you. Why are you Muslims following a suicidal mentally ill prophet? Depressed mentally ill prophet. Yeah, without a parachute. There was no parachute at that time, Karian. So Muhammad, every time he wants to go to the top of the mountain to throw himself down. Not once, not twice, a lot of times, right? Every time, you see? How many times? Every time. The suicidal, depressed prophet of Islam, right? Because there was no ayahs more from Waraka, because Waraka died and the so-called divine inspiration, the ayahs, were paused. Why? I mean, why? Why is Waraka so important, right? <laughs> because he's the source of the Quran and the proof is in front of you. Uh-oh. Oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian Prince, man? Is Christian Prince hiding, guys? Where is Christian Prince when you need him? Man. Man! Right? And every time he wants to jump, Jibril comes before him and says to him what he had said before. Right? So every time he wants to commit suicide, what a shame, guys. A suicidal prophet. You call this a prophet of God? Jibril comes, so called Jibril, we know it's a demon, came to stop Muhammad. Right? The suicidal prophet of Islam. What a shame. If this was my prophet, guys, I would be really ashamed. I would be really ashamed, guys. But because this guy wants to jump every time, man. My friend Muhammad, go see a doctor. For Allah's sake, go see a doctor. Y'all, guys, sorry, I can't do Zakar Naik like Christian Prince. No one can do Zakar Naik like Christian Prince. So, uh, you know... I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, humiliate myself. So don't ask me to call Zachary Knight, guys. I can't do that stuff, man. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. I have to disappoint you guys. So you see, we can conclude that Jibril is no one else than Satan, right? And Muhammad is nothing but a Satan, prophet of Satan, right? The moment Waraka dies, divine inspiration stops and Muhammad becomes suicidal, right? There is another hadith, guys, why I'm showing you this picture. You see here the angel sitting on the throne? You see here the angel sitting on the throne? Well, let me prove to you from another hadith from Sahih, Sahih Muslim, hadith number one. 61 one, 161d one sahih sahih muslim if we i don't you know it's really a long hadith but if you keep continue reading here there is a guy one of the sahaba was hearing a sound and he did not see anybody so he he kept hearing a, sa a sound from someone I was again called, so the guy was keep getting called, and I looked about, saw nothing. So the guy, the Sahabi, saw nothing, the companion of Muhammad. I was again called, I raised my head, and there on the throne, in the open atmosphere, he, i.e. Jibril, was sitting. Uh-oh. Jibril sitting on a throne? Last time I checked, only Allah sits on the throne. 
Al Arsh istawa. Allah sitting on a throne, right? So how how is Jibreel now sitting on the throne of Allah? Uh oh. So clearly, Jibreel and Allah and Satan are the same guy, shapeshifters. And we are going to prove it to you guys that actually it was Satan coming in the shape of Al Abyad. Remember the, the name, Al Abyad, the white one? A demon coming in the shape of Jibreel. Many shapes, guys, in Islam. Dahya al Kalbi, remember? So, how is it possible that Jibreel is sitting on the throne of Allah? Uh oh. You know, disaster upon disaster upon disaster. Let me give you the hadith, guys. You know, this is really damaging stuff, guys. Father of all of you, Rob, can you do show about Muhammad raping his dead aunt? Oh man, why, why do you want me to talk about nasty stuff in Islam, man? You, you, you really want me to go there, man? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, Iblis sitting on the throne of Allah. You see, guys, seems that Jibreel is equal with Allah. Why would the servant of Allah, right? Muslims say angels are servants of Allah. Why are they sitting on a throne? Of Allah. Muhammad, the pride of Satan. Yes, you heard it correctly. Muhammad is the pride of Satan in Islam. Guys, if we go to Tafsir for Quran, chapter 22, this is Quran, guys. This is not Hadith, okay? Chapter 22, Ayah 52, we can read. From the tafsir for the Quranic ayah, from Asbab and Nuzul, highly respected tafsir. This is tafsir, not hadith, guys. This is Quran by Al Wahidi. For chapter 22, ayah 52, right? Read with me, guys. The commentators of the Quran said, When the Messenger of Allah, Allah praying on him, there's nothing called Allah bless him. Remember yesterday's phone call guys the guy called me and he tried to tell uh, everyone saying that Allah you salli means Allah bless no 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 Allah praises he made it even more worse Allah praises last time we checked if we go to chapter one of the Quran Alhamdulillah remember chapter one ayah two Alhamdulillah so all praises is for Allah you know so when you know when Muslims speak they make it even more worse for Allah so Allah is still praying in the meanwhile, Allah is still praying on Muhammad. When Allah prays, to who, to who does Allah pray? Right? Allah praises who? If you're going to say it's praises, you, may, you are making it even more worse. Allah praises who? Another Allah? Maybe his wife Akbar, the son. Maybe his daughters. Allah al Uzza wal Manan. Yeah, Muhammad Hijab, carry on. Muhammad Hijab said Allah prays for you know and he went to Ghana to Africa to hide himself after that debate and he came back he said Allah praises Muhammad my friend you are making it more worse <laughs> you see when Muslims they open their mouth they do more poo poo than their prophet right So let us continue reading, guys. So Muhammad was sitting in Mecca, guys, at that moment, when this ayah came down, according to the tafsir. And he was with his people, who? The pagan Quraysh. Remember, Muhammad is from the tribe of the Quraysh. Pagan people, right? From Mecca. So Muhammad was sitting with the people, were shunning him. He was aggrieved by their rejection. So they rejected him as a prophet, right? Of the message he brought to them. And he secretly wished that Allah, exalted as he, reveals something to him which will bring him and his people closer to each other. So Muhammad wished that Allah would send him so-called divine revelation. 
you know, so that he can re reconcile with the Arabic Qurayshi pagans, right? With the Arabs, his tribe, the Quraysh, right? Keen as he was, yeah, Muhammad was so keen, guys, to see them accept faith. So Muhammad wanted them to become Muslims, right? One day, he sat in one of the congregations of the Quraysh, with the pagans, right? Quraysh are the pagans, his own tribe, his own family, right? Which attracted a huge number of its members. And he wished that Allah exalted, he does not reveal to him on that day anything. So he really hoped that Allah would stay silent, guys. But Allah, <laughs> Allah exalted, he didn't listen anyway, <laughs> revealed to him from Surah al najm So, ayahs, right? By the star, when it's, so Allah is swearing, by the star. Doesn't make sense, but anyway. Surah chapter 53. The messenger of Allah, Allah praying on him, recited, but when he reached, have you thought, have you thought upon Allah Tal Uzza wal Mana, the third other? Chapter 53, ayah 1920. The devil, who, you see, Muhammad now becomes, from now on, Muhammad becomes the prophet of the devil. The devil put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said, These are the mighty cranes. Al Gharaniq and their intercession is hoped for. So, guys, this part that you see highlighted here are the satanic verses. Yes, he became the devil spokesman, he became the prophet of Satan. Did you catch it? Boom! The proof is in front of you. Any Muslim dares to call me and say you are lying. Uh oh. Uh oh. So he said, the devil said, Tilka al gharani qal ula inna shafa'atahunna la turtaja. See how beautiful Satan can talk? So he gave the satanic verses to Muhammad. So this part, guys, let me try to prove to you what I'm saying here. If we go to chapter 53 from the Quran, this is Quran, guys, don't forget, this is not hadith, this is Quran. So, according to the tafsir, when Muhammad finished reciting chapter 53, ayah 19, have you considered Allah, Al Uzza, and Al Manad the third one? Satan then gives him this. These are the mighty cranes, and their intercession is up for. So this part, guys, pay attention, take notes. This part is after this. So here, after this, here between 20 and 21, these words were in the Quran. So Muslims had to fix the problem, and they removed it from here. So between 20 and 21, this was an ayah. The highlighted one. So here we can read after and manad the third one. Tilka al gharani qal ula inna shafa'atuhunna la turtaja. These are the mighty cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. So after this, there's an ayah missing. Uh oh. Guys, please take notes. Help me to help you. If you like today's teaching, download it after YouTube process it. it normally takes like 30 minutes right when the processing is done you can download the video cut parts that you like and upload them help me to help you help those poor victims in islam help them so the satanic verses guys were in chapter 53 after ayah 20 after this ayah that is highlighted right tilka al gharani qal ula these are the mighty cranes. What are the mighty cranes? They are the bird idols. These are bird idols, right? 
Alat al Uzza wal Manat, guys. What are they, basically? Alat al Uzza wal Manat, the third one. They were basically, guys, pay attention, okay? This is important stuff. They were basically bird idols who had wings like Jibreel. They could fly, right? The pagan Quraysh that we are just read from, the pagan Quraysh, when they prayed, they were pagans, right? When they prayed, those bird idols, Manat al Uzza wal Manat, right? They could fly and bring the prayers of the pagans all the way to Allah, the supreme moon idol. So when Muslims say, there's, we have a concept called Tawheed, well, the pagans had Tawheed. What's Tawheed? It's unification, remember? Tawheed is unification. What's unification, guys? I am doing Tawheed, right? I am unifying. Right? The proof is in front of you. This is what Tawheed means. Unification. Unification of what? Of many idols. Allah, the supreme moon idol, the number one guy, right? Who is married with the son, Akbar like we showed you yesterday, and his three daughters, Lat, Al-Uzza, wal Manat, who brought, who flew with the prayers, with their wings, all the way to the moon idol, Allah. And together, they are unified, right? So actually, the pagans, Qurayshi pagans, they were using Tawheed. Tawheed is nothing new in Islam, guys. How many times have we told you guys, how many times did we told you that Muhammad didn't bring anything new, right? Muhammad didn't bring anything new. Everything that Muhammad put in Islam already existed. Yes, unification of pagan gods. Exactly, Peter. Tawheed means unification. Unifying Allah, Akbar, the son, his wife, and his three Daughters, Allah, al Uzza, wal Manat. What is Ahad? Didn't you pay attention yesterday or were you not here, Ben Yusuf? I think you weren't here, right? I didn't see you, my friend. But let me show you what it is. If we go to chapter 112, 112, let me teach you what Ahad is. It's actually good that you mention it, you know? Maybe some people weren't here yesterday, so we're going to explain it again. This is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Do you see it? Chapter Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112. It says, say he is Allah the One. There's nothing called One in the Arabic. Guys, this is a false translation. What did I always say? Never ever trust a translation. Don't trust, put a red cross on it. You see how important it is to know Arabic like me? Liars and deceivers when they translate. You can never ever trust a Muslim with his translation. Don't do it because you will know he's deceiving you. So the word, you know, you can read it as this. Let me read the Arabic for you. Qul huwa say he Allah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Question. What is one in Arabic? What is one in Arabic? Can, can someone help me? What is the word one in Arabic? What does one mean? Wahid. Exactly. When I count in Arabic, let me count to one, two, three in Arabic. Wahid, tanin, talata. Wahid, tanin, talata. Do you hear ahad from my mouth? Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Have anyone seen Rush Hour? <laughs> Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? No. Did I say Ahad? No. I said Wahid. Wahid, Tanin, Talata. One, two, three. So Ahad, guys, means one off. Let me prove it. 
أحد الأولاد one of the children أحد الأولاد I don't say واحد الأولاد that doesn't make sense that's not Arabic أحد الأولاد means أحد الأولاد means one of the children did you catch it أحد الآلهات is one of the idols or sorry gods right gods I meant to say gods one of the gods did you catch it what Ahad means why did Allah not say قل هو الله واحد uh oh oof 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 the Quran is busted busted do you see it aha yes exactly Mark aha uh oh so guys Ahad refers to Allah his wife Akbar the son and his three daughters Allat Al-Uzza wal Manat aha hey Abdul Haliga how are you my friend Abdul Haliga, what is Wahid in Arabic? You're an Arabic speaker, right? What is Wahid? We have another speaker, guys, who can confirm for me. What is Wahid and what is Ahad? Are you with me, my friend? It means one. What is one? Wahad is one, right? You confirm. So Ahad, Ahad is one of, right? Ahad means one of. Uh oh. Uh oh. So why didn't Allah say Qul huwa Allahu Wahad? Why did He say Ahad? And why do Muslims need to lie in the Quran when they translate? Shame on you, man. This is a disaster. And they say this is one of the most important chapters, guys. So Allah is confusing Muslims in one of his most important chapters. Right? And yesterday we showed you that Ahad, guys, and Asamad are nothing but Aramaic Hebrew words. Right? Let me show you where Muhammad stole Ahad from. He tried to copy the Jews and the Christians. Let me show you. From the Bible. Right? From the Bible. If we go to the Bible. <clears throat> Uh, da, da, da. Deuteronomy, guys, Deuteronomy 6 4. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6 4. See, this is BibleGateway.com from the King James Version, Deuteronomy 6 4. Muhammad stole it from here, guys. Here or Israel, this is the Shema that you see here in front of you. This is the Shema. Right? Hear, O Israel, Shema, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Guys, the word one here is Echad. Right? One is Echad. Uh oh. Ahad. Echad. Right? So Muhammad stole this word from Echad. What is Echad in Hebrew, guys? It means Compound unity. What is compound unity? Anyone? What is a compound unity? Guys? It's unification, right? Like we said. Right? Unity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Exactly. As one. So guys, the Trinity is in this eye. Is, sorry, it's in this verse, right? 
You see the signature of God? The Trinity right here in the Old Testament. Use it guys. The Shema is proof for the Trinity. So if you call yourself a Christian, this is your proof from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy 6.4, that the Trinity is right here, because the word is Echad. And Echad in Hebrew means compound unity, right? So Muhammad actually busted himself when he used the same word. One of, right? One of. Use this, guys, in your debates. So Allah is one of many. This word means one of many, at least two, right? Yeah. Exactly. Lord, Lord, Lord. The Shema, guys, is Lord, Lord, Lord. Let me prove it to you. Right, let me prove it to you. <clears throat> let me go to the same Deuteronomy six four. Oh, Deuteronomy six. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Let me go to the right verse and. But on different different website, guys. This is Deuteronomy 6.4. You see it? You see it, guys? Is the screen uh, appearing? This is for a different website, BibleHub.com. Very famous website for the Bible. This is Deuteronomy 6.4, right? If we change the language, if we change the, the language to lexicon, If we change the, it to lexicon to the Hebrew, right? So that you can see the Hebrew. You see Hebrew. Shema. Look, this is our very famous Shema. Guys, the Shema, when you open up YouTube and you look for the Shema, how the Jews are praying, they are getting it literally from the Bible. So there's nothing more wrong with the Jewish Shema. It's direct copy from the Bible. It's very holy. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Right? So the, sh the Jews say, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh, Eloheinu. So listen, O Israel, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see the Trinity right there, guys? Yahweh, the Lord, God, 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 compound unity, Echad, one. You see the Trinity right there? Please, guys, take notes. Right? Yahweh, God, 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 one. See the Trinity in the Shema, guys? So Muhammad tried to copy the Jews and the Christians. Even the word Asamad, even the word Asamad means team a team right we proved that yesterday to you right we proved it yesterday to you let me try to <clears throat> show you mm, let's see Let me try to prove to you what al samad means. You see this word, guys? al samad Muhammad stole that word from the Bible too. From the Jews and the Assyrians, from the Aramaic people, right? Because remember, the Jews used to speak Aramaic and Hebrew. This is the word, samad. You see it? Samad. al samad So it's an Hebrew word. Let me give you the word, guys, in the text, in the chat.
and let me give you the link all right so what does it mean guys it means a couple a pair a team did you catch it it's more than one it's more than one so when we go back قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدُ One of many Hebrew word Aramaic word Allahu Samad A team Right? Samad Right? At least two It's a team, it's together Pair, pairs, couple Uh oh Plural, yeah, exactly, Abdul Haliga. So it's an Aramaic word. And remember, when we ask Muslims what is Arabic, they they claim that Arabic is a Semitic language. So it comes from the Aramaic. Remember, Aramaic is the mother language, right? Team Allah, yeah, Team Allah, together with his wife Akbar, the son, and his three daughters, right? How many proof do you want, guys? How many proof do you want? So that's my explanation for the, our friends Ben Yusuf. Ben Yusuf, are you satisfied with the answer, my friend? I hope you're satisfied with the answer. <clears throat> Let me go back to my original topic of today. So to prove to you furthermore, guys, to prove to you furthermore, from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5765, Sahih, 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 right? Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad was actually working for Satan. He was controlling, he was getting controlled by Satan because when we ask Muslims, who is the master of black magic? They will say it's Satan, right? Shaitan. Is the master. You see that? So Satan worked his black magic according to Aisha from Sahih al Bukhari. Satan worked his black magic on Allah's Messenger. So Muhammad became the devil's advocate. He was the pride of Satan. Uh oh so Muhammad walked like a crazy Majnoon guys Majnoon the word Majnoon in Arabic means someone who is possessed by jinn so Muhammad was possessed by the black magic of Satan he walked like a Majnoon for at least six months thinking so that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not so Muhammad worked like a crazy person. This is why people used to call him Majnoon. Guys, let me give you the hadith. Abdul Haliga, Habibi. Here's the hadith. Right? Use the link, guys. So Muhammad used to walk like a Majnoon, controlled by Satan, working for Satan. And look what the people are saying. Sofyan said, that is the hardest kind of magic. <laughs> so Satan used the most hardest black magic that he had to control Muhammad. And it has such an effect. Uh oh. Uh oh. Then one day he said, Oh Aisha, do you know that Allah has instructed me concerning the matter I asked him about? So question Muslims, right? Question. Why did Allah not protect Muhammad from the black magic of Satan? I mean, you Muslims claim that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. He is the seal of all the prophets. He is the number one prophet. He is the last prophet. Why is Muhammad the only prophet in history being under the control of Satan? Why didn't, if Allah is truly God, guys, question, if Allah is truly God, 
Why didn't Allah protect Muhammad from Satan? Why is Muhammad walking like a majnoon, possessed by jinn? God bless you too, Natalie. Welcome. Any Muslim? Any Muslim? I hope you can answer this question. Why is Allah not protecting Muhammad from Satan? Casting black magic on him. Alright. You see guys. It's a long hadith. I gave you the link. Well basically you know. <laughs> Muhammad is possessed by black jinn. Right. Sorry by black magic. Controlled by Muhammad. By, by Satan. Right. Being nothing but a prophet of Satan. Walking like a crazy person. Right? Guys, if we go to the Quran, this is Quran, don't say this is fake. Let's say you are a Shia Muslim or you don't accept Hadith, you are a Quran only Muslim. What are you going to do with the Quran? Huh? Chapter 15. Chapter 15. Let me make it bigger. This is chapter. 15 ayah 42 you see it this is quran don't say this is fake hadith <laughs> lord of mercy according to this ayah guys if you read it with me you will certainly have no authority over my servants so allah is saying here guys allah is saying here pay attention this is really important ayah okay that you can use let me give you the link Disaster. Allah is saying to Satan, pay attention guys, Allah is saying to Satan, you Satan will certainly have no authority over my servants. Is Muhammad a servant of Allah? The answer is yes. So Allah is promising Satan, you will never have authority, you will never control my prophets, my servants, except the deviant who follow you. So according to this ayah, guys, Muhammad is a deviant. Muhammad is the deviant one. Guys, my English is not, not really good. What is the meaning of deviant? What is deviant? What's the meaning of deviant? What is the meaning guys? Help me to help you. Someone who is basically disobedient, right? Someone who is not Apart from God, he goes against God, right? Someone who is not a believer, basically, right? Abnormal, different, yeah, basically, yeah. So according to this ayah, Muhammad is a deviant because Satan actually did have authority over Muhammad, remember? Because Satan controlled Muhammad with his black magic. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, oof, oof, oof. So Muhammad was controlled by Satan, while Allah in the Quran is saying that Satan has no control over the servants of Allah. Over his slaves, right? Except the deviant ones who follow Satan. So according to this ayah, Muhammad is deviant, he follows Satan, and look what Allah is saying about Muhammad. Look what Allah is saying about Muhammad. Then the next verse, 15, chapter 15, 43. Then the next verse, and surely Muhammad, his destiny, his place is in hell. Uh-oh. According to the Quran, guys, take notes. According to the Quran, Muhammad is now in hell, fire burning for eternity. <laughs> Boom. We drop. We just dropped a big, huge bomb. I think we just dropped a nuclear bomb, guys. 
we dropped the biggest bomb on the Islamic nation. A huge bomb. I think it was the Tsar bomb. You know, remember the, the, the bomb that the Russians uh, fired? It was, I'm, I don't know how many times bigger than the, the nuclear bomb that was dropped on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Remember? World War II? USA dropped a huge bomb. I think this one is much bigger, right? So according, let me repeat it again. According to chapter 15, Ayah 42, Satan does his control. He has authority over Muhammad. Muhammad is a deviant one who follows Satan. And Muhammad in the next verse is burning in hellfire. Like his father, like his mother Amina, like his uncle, right? They died like pagans, mushrikun, and Muhammad is enjoying hellfire together with them, right? Boom, right? I mean, this is not my Quran. I mean, the proof is in front of you guys. Is if. Satan can control Muhammad and he has authority over Muhammad because Satan is the master of black magic and according to this ayah Satan only has authority over the dev deviant ones then Muhammad must be a follower of Satan he must be the devil advocate of Satan he is the deviant and he is burning in hell Muslims, your prophet is burning in hellfire according to chapter 15, ayah 42 and 43. It's on you, Muslims. And here is the proof. Swallow it. Eat it. Either you're going to leave Islam today, or you, if you like your 72 virgins, your big-breasted 72 virgins, the empty promises of Satan, who is nothing, another guy, Allah, right? He's Allah, in the shape of Allah, lying to you, deceiving you, that you will get 72 virgins in his sex, prostitution, brothel called Jannah, right? Yeah, I, uh, I need to drink something, guys. I'm talking for more than one and a half hour. Let me drink something, guys. Sometimes, you know, when you're, you are really excited, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, sometimes you forget to drink something, right? <sighs> Delicious water. You see, guys? Like we said, the devil has authority over Muhammad. Muhammad is the deviant one. And surely hell is awaiting him. Like his father, Abdullah. Like his mother, Amina. Remember, Muhammad said to the Sahabi, one of the Sahaba came and he asked Muhammad, Where is my father? Muhammad turns and he says, Your father and my father are burning in hellfire. Another hadith says that Muhammad prayed to Allah and asked forgiveness for his mother Amina and Allah didn't want to forgive her. So according to Islamic most trusted sources, Abdullah, the father of Muhammad, Amina, the mother of Muhammad and his uncle are all in hellfire and Muhammad is in hellfire too and the proof is in front of you. Oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian Prince when you need him? I mean, if this is not crystal clear proof, guys, that Muhammad well, is the devil's advocate, working for the devil, being the prophet of the devil, then I don't know what evidence means. I don't know what the definition of evidence means. Oof, oof, oof. Right?
Muhammad is the deviant one. He is burning in hellfire. According to your Quran, according to your Sahih Al-Bukhari. Right? And if we go to the tafsir, guys, this is the tafsir for the same chapter 15, ayah 32. 42. Tafsir Al-Miqbaz by Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad. Tafsir from the cousin of Muhammad. Lo, as for my slaves, my believing slaves, though the devil has no power over them or strength over any of them, save such of four, such of the disbelievers as obey you. So the disbelievers only follow Satan. So Muhammad is a disbeliever and he follows Satan, right? And if we go to the second Ayah, tafsir for the second ayah, and lo, for all such, hell will be the promised place. So Muhammad is burning like a little pagan. He is burning in hellfire together with his parents and his uncle. The destination of those who obey you, right? Because Muhammad is under the authority, like we said, of Satan, Satan working black magic, on Muhammad and he has authority over Muhammad his place is hellfire that's his place even according to tafsir al-jalalain how many more proof do we want you do you want from me and truly hell shall be their trust all of them that's all those who follow you shall be with you in hellfire right tafsir al-jalalain not my tafsir Right. So Muhammad's parking place is hellfire. Uh huh. Burn, baby, burn. Muslims, please, for your own sake, for your own salvation, please leave Islam. Come back home to Jesus. Yes, of course, my friend. Here's the link. So <clears throat> that's for 43. This is for 42. Let me give you 42 too. Right? And don't forget to use it with the hadith from Sahih al Bukhari like I just did. Since Satan is the master of Muhammad in this hadith. He is controlling Muhammad according to chapter 15, ayah 42 and 43, right? Muhammad is under the authority of Satan. He is the deviant one and his place is hellfire, right? Take notes, guys. Use it. Help me to help you to save those poor victims that we call Muhammadans who are under the Abdulism satanic cult of satan right yesterday one of our brothers i don't think he's with us here is he with us Prant, Prant C, are you here my friend you gave me this hadith yesterday thank you i mean there are a lot of hadiths i don't know every hadith right so thank you for that and we read the following guys this is sahih al-bukhari volume six Hadith number 40, 475. This is not my hadith. This is Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari. Hey, Brancy, you remember the hadith? This is your hadith that you gave me, my friend. From muflihoon.com, right? Another website. There are many websites, right? You can also find this one on sunnah.com, right? Great hadith. Yeah, very nice hadith to use against Muhammad. Read with me, guys. Narrated Jundub bin Sufyan from Sahih al Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. This is not da'if. Oh, don't lie, Muslims. This is not da'if. Especially if you call yourself a Sunni Muslim, which are the 90% of whole Islam. Right? Once Allah's Apostle became very sick, I think, guys, I think. 
Muhammad forgot to eat his seven ajwa. Remember the seven ajwa? Thank you, Phil, for providing the same hadith in the chat. Use it, guys. So Muhammad forgot to eat his seven ajwa. Abd e Haliga, Frauch, don't laugh, man. This is not funny, man. Shame on you, man. Yeah, he forgot to eat seven ajwa, seven dates that morning, and became very sick and could not offer his night prayer. So Muhammad could not pray that night. Right? For two or three nights. So Muhammad could not pray for two or three nights. Then a lady, look guys, pay attention, this is important stuff. Then a lady, who's that lady? The wife of Abu Lahab. The wife of who? Abu Lahab, the uncle of Muhammad. Abu Lahab, guys, is the uncle of Muhammad, direct uncle. And Muslims call him Abu Lahab because this guy was too smart and his wife was too smart because they know Muhammad is a scam, a scam. he's a scumbag, he's a liar. Right? They called him a Majnoon. The, his own uncle called him a Majnoon. The wife of his uncle called him a Majnoon. And they used to tease Muhammad because they knew this guy is a liar. You're a liar, Muhammad. So Muslims, this is not his real name, by the way, guys. They gave him a nickname, Abu Lahab, the one who is basically on fire. Father of the flame, yeah. So they gave him a nickname, insulting the, the uncle of Muhammad, the family of Muhammad, right? So she came, the wife of Abu Lahab came and said, O oh Muhammad, I think that your Satan has forsaken you. Uh oh. She's saying your Satan has forsaken you. For I have not seen him with you for two or three nights. Uh oh. Then Satan in the shape of Allah revealed by the forenoon and by the night when it darkens your Lord Satan has neither forsaken you nor hated you. Lord have mercy. How many more proof do you want guys that Satan is his Lord? Satan is the Lord of Muhammad. How many more proof guys? We showed you from the Quran, chapter 15, ayah 42, 43. We showed you from the Hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari. And now we are showing you, again from Sahih al-Bukhari, that his Lord is Satan. And Satan, in the shape of Allah, says, I did not forsake you. She's lying. I'm still here. Hello, Muhammad. I'm still here. Don't worry. Right? Guys, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you that Muhammad is the pride of Satan? Huh? Muhammad is the pride of Satan. He is the prophet of Satan. Right? Didn't I told you today that I'm going to prove it to you? Didn't I keep my promise, guys, today? I did, right? I went to the Islamic most trusted sources. I went to Sahih al-Bukhari. I went to the Quran. How many proof do you want? Muslims, wake up. Please, please, guys. We are not doing this to scare you. We are not doing this to mock you. We are doing this to help you. To show you that Muhammad is nothing but the prophet of Satan. How many more proof do you want, Muslims? If you care about yourselves, leave Islam and come back home to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Please come back home. You want to follow Satan and his prophet? Stay in Islam. Maybe Satan will give you, I mean Allah, 
will give you 72 big breasted Houris. Empty promises from Satan. And why would, I mean, if, if Allah is truly God as you claim, why would you believe that he would give you nasty stuff? This is nothing but prostitution, guys. Prostitution. Allah is the pimp. And Muhammad is the prophet of the pimp. Promising you nothing but sex. Why would I want to go to a sex brothel called Jannah? What's the benefit of that? These are nothing but empty promises from Satan, guys. Empty promises. Lies. Lying to you to deceive you, to force you into this cult. Right? It's nothing but hellfire, guys. That's what Allah is promising you. It's hellfire. Muhammad and Khadija. Remember, guys, when we were reading for you that long hadith? Khadija created Islam together with Waraka. It was an inside job. Khadija is the one who created Islam. And Waraka was helping Muhammad translating the Injil from Aramaic to Arabic as we showed you. Right? Giving Muhammad sources translation to create Quranic ayahs. When Waraka died, Muhammad became very sad and he became suicidal. And the so called divine inspiration stopped. Yeah. Khadija is the problem. She created Islam, it was her idea. Guys, you remember my video? I made a video a while ago about al Abyad, and we mentioned al Abyad today, right guys? We mentioned him today to you, right? al Abyad. Who is al Abyad, guys? It's the same demon, it's Satan shape-shifting. Shape-shifter Satan coming to Muhammad in the shape of Jibreel, and we are going to prove it to you. Right? We're going to prove it to you. Prophet Muhammad, Allah praying on him, and the devil named Al Abiyat. Right? Do you see it? Do you see it? Al Abiyat, the white one. Let me drink something, guys, before we continue. Al Abyad, right? The all narratives mentioning Al Abyad comes under three verses. This is Quran, guys. Chapter twenty-two. We read it from you for from there, right? So he's the one giving Muhammad the satanic verses. Remember the tafsir that I gave you guys. Uh, you remember this one, guys? The devil putting on his tongue. This is the same al guys. Giving him the satanic verses. Tilka al al ula inna shafa'atahunna laturtaja. These are the mighty cranes. The gharaniq. And their intercession is hoped for. Right? And we showed you that this is in chapter 53, 19 and 20, right? Allah al-Uzza wal Manad, the third, right? Same guy, al Abyad. It's Satan himself, right? So, chapter 22, 52. Chapter 59, 16, and chapter 81, 25. There you see al Abiyad appearing in the Quran, right? 
right? If we continue, guys, reading, in connection with verse 2252, though Al Sam'ani saying in his work also made a passing remark about the report suggesting Al Abiyad coming to the Prophet. Coming to who? Uh oh. And telling him the infamous satanic verses. You catch it? The first gave a detailed account. The one, the first one who gave a detailed account of Al Abiyad in the context was Al Razi. Guys, Al Razi is one of the most highly respected scholars reporting this. This is not Rob Christian, right? Who records that? This is the Arabic. If you read the translation, read with me, guys. It is reported from Atta that Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, pay attention, guys. The cousin of Muhammad said, A devil called Al Abyad, the cousin of Muhammad saying, Ibn, Al -Abb Ibn Abbas saying, came to the Prophet. So Al Razi confirming this. Al Razi, one of the most important scholars in Islam, guys. Ibn Abbas said, a devil called al Abyad came to the Prophet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is a shocking, man. This is shocking. I, if, if I was a Muslim, guys, I would have not stayed a second, for a split second in Islam anymore. al Abyad, in the shape of the white one coming to Muhammad, devil? This is God? This is a religion, guys? This is a religion? In the form of Jibreel. So, Al Abyad, a devil, coming in the shape of Jibreel. Uh oh. Crazy, right? How many more proof? This is not me reporting. This is the cousin of Muhammad, guys, reporting it. Sahabi. And Muhammad called him the Shaykh of Islam. Right? If you want to learn about Islam, about the Quran, go to Ibn Abbas, my cousin. He is the one saying that the devil called Al Abiyad, the white one, came to the Prophet in the form of Jibreel, giving him satanic verses. Right? He is the one giving him the satan. The Famous satanic verses, right, that we just mentioned. It's the same guy. al Abiyad, right? It's the same guy, the white one. Do you see him? They even make, made a nice painting about him, man. This is why Muhammad was called Majnoon. Someone who is possessed by jinn, and we know the devil in Islam is jinn. Majnoon. Let me spell it out for you. Majnoon. Muhammad even is called in the Quran Majnoon. That's his nickname. Muhammad Majnoon. Someone who is possessed by jinn, by demons. Prophet of the devil, exactly. And the proof is in front of you. And he gave Muhammad the satanic words, i.e. the satanic verses. This is Ibn Abbas reporting it. The cousin of Muhammad. I mean, come on, man. How many more proof do you want that Muhammad is the prophet of Satan? This is not me speaking, this is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet. These are the mighty cranes, Allah al wal manat. Their intercession is hoped for. The world famous satanic verses. 
Boom. Another nuclear bomb dropped on your head. Muslims. Uh oh. What are you going to do with this Muslims? Any Muslim who wants to call me a liar. Lord of mercy, man. I mean, I'm really, you know, this is disgusting, man. So, the same, basically the same tafsir that we mentioned, right, God? So, when Muslims want to say, Rob Christian, you are a liar, this is ta'if, this is fake. No, no, Habibi. We gave you the tafsir for the Quran. Let me give it again, guys. Right? This is the website that is owned by the king himself, the king of Jordan. Not my website, right? Right? Guys, if I go to the bottom, look, look. Who owns this website? The Royal Al Al Bayt Institute for Islamic Thought. You see it? This is a royal website, guys. This is owned by the Kingdom of Jordan. Not my website. Don't lie. Don't say this is this is created by you, Rob Christian. No, 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 Habibi, no. And you can even go to the Arabic. You can switch to the Arabic. See it? See it? Basically, what is being said here is also mentioned here. Right? Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. So if we continue, guys, when the pagans heard that, it pleased them. So they became really happy when Muhammad gave them the satanic verses. Thereupon Jibreel came, the real Jibreel, right? <laughs> the real Jibreel came and asked him to rehearse the revelation to him. So when Muhammad said, تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِ قَلْعُلَى إِنَّ شَفَعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى What did Jibreel say? What did the real, let the real... Jibreel, please stand up. Hello, I'm the real Jibreel. I'm the real gun. Muhammad, I'm the real one. Right? Saying, when he reached those words, Jibreel said, Spank, spank, Muhammad, what have you done? It wasn't me. It was Satan. So Jibreel spanking Muhammad, saying, I did not bring you these words. Someone came to me in your form. So Muhammad is saying, Someone look like you, Jibreel. And he cast these words on my tongue. So here, Muhammad is speaking. Right? Muhammad saying, But Jibreel, I thought it was you. He came in your, in my, in your form. Remember? This guy, al Abiyat came to me. And he said, I'm you. You are me. I'm you. You are me. Right? Uh oh. Question Muslims. Where is Allah when you need Him? Where is Allah when you need Him to protect Muhammad from Satan? What did Allah say? Chapter 15, Ayah 42. You, Satan, have certainly no authority over my slaves, over Muhammad except the deviant ones. So Muhammad, because he is under the control of Satan, delivering satanic verses under the magic spell of Satan, he is the one following you. Now, because of that, Muhammad is in hellfire burning. That's his place. That's his park place. I think, guys, Muhammad bought the biggest ticket and he drove with his car, with his DeLorean, to Hellfire. I think he's staying there. He's enjoying the barbecue there. I don't want to go into much details, but if you go and see what the description is of Hellfire in Islam, 
uh, I think Christian Prince mentioned that many times. You know, with the long, big chains up your right up yours big chains i think muhammad is really uh, enjoying himself there right yeah lord have mercy this is a religion muslims let me continue so muhammad is blaming satan right where is Allah when you need him? Why is Allah being silent, man? Man. Allah, poor, poor Muhammad, man. Muhammad is a victim. Allah allowing Satan to control his prophet. As for Quran, guys. Quran. This is Quran. 59, 16. It is related as a parenthetic line in an unusual long story of an Israelite ascetic named Barsisa, lured by Al Abyad as a special assignment from the chief devil Iblis. So it was always Satan. It's the inside job. You know, Satan. Satan. Always Satan in Islam. Al Qurtubi writes. This is the world famous Al Qurtubi. Right? Writing Al Abiyat. Satan. He was the companion of the prophets. Shame on you, Muslims, for lying about our prophets. Maybe the Islamic prophets, not our prophets. So, look what, guys, look what is happening here. Pay attention, guys. According to Al Qurtubi, right? According to Al Qurtubi, Lying, right, about the prophets. So be, to fix it, guys, to fix the, this disaster, right, that Muhammad was under the control of Satan himself, they have to lie about Abraham, about Moses, right? Lying that al Abiyad is their companion. So, guys, remember the hadith? Your Satan has forsaken you, Muhammad. Right? Your Satan has forsaken you, for I've not seen him with you for two or three nights. Right? So, in Islam, guys, the companion of the prophets is who is Satan himself. Lord of mercy. Muslims. Why are you believing these lies, man? So the prophets, their companion is Satan? This guy is the companion of the prophets in Islam? What a shame. You Muslims, your scholars have no shame, have no dignity. To cover up that Muhammad is the true prophet of Satan, of al -Abiyad, they have to lie about all the prophets, about Moses, about Abraham, right? And the one who intended to reach the Prophet in the form of Jibreel to whisper to him in the grab of revelation. However, Jibreel intervened and pushed al Abyad with his hand, throwing him to the farthest corner of India. So if we have Indian people here, be careful, among you al Abyad is hiding. So Jibreel, the real Jibreel, let the real Jibreel please stand up. And he stood up and he pushed al Abyad all the way to India. So if you are a guy from India listening to this, be careful. Don't be happy because al Abyad is hiding among you. Oof, oof, oof. al Abyad is hiding now in, al in India. Because Jibreel pushed him there. Why India? Why not uh, Sri Lanka? I mean, why not Saudi Arabia, man? Jibreel, 
Why are you pushing the guy, this guy into India, man? India. Yeah. Satan is hiding in India. If I was a guy from India, I would have... Take my best suitcase, put my clothes and all my money, take my wife and children and migrate. Leave India, guys. If you are in India, leave India, guys. India is the place of Satan, according to Al Qurtubi. Al Qurtubi. Alapiat is in India? <laughs> what a stupid cult, man. What a cult of Satan is it? Satanic cult, man. Lies. Satan is hiding in India? This guy is hiding in India, guys? Alapiat is hiding in India? In commentary to verse, again, Quran, guys. This is Quran. They are talking about the Quran, not Hadith. Commentary, Tafsir, for chapter 81, 25, Muqtal B. Sulaiman is noting, taking notes, when the Prophet was sent, Iblis said, who is for this Prophet who has merged from the land of Tiyama and a shaitan called Al-Abiyad, again, Al-Abiyad, who was the companion of the Prophets. Muslims, I will give you a thousand dollars and every Christian here in the chat will add a thousand more if you can prove to us from the Bible that there's a guy called Al-Abiyad who is the companion of the prophets. Look man, you will get rich if you can show me one verse from the Bible that is saying this. You will get a millionaire. I mean, look how many Christians are, there, are here. We have more than 137 people watching. Right? <laughs> not me, Liz. Is not me. Why, man? Don't you trust the Bible? <laughs> well, maybe she doesn't have it. I mean, maybe she doesn't. I mean, not everyone has a thousand dollars. I understand. Utter <laughs> Mohammedan nonsense. Man, guys, to cover up the disaster that Muhammad was delivering the satanic verses, right? The satanic verses from the devil to the Quraysh, right? Tilka al gharani al ula inna shafa'atuhunna la turtaja. And then when the Quraysh pagans heard this, they were really pleased. So to cover it up, guys, Right? They make it even more worse by lying about all the prophets. That the same guy who gave the satanic verses to Muhammad, he is the companion of all the prophets. Sahab al Anbiya. Right? So when the wife of Abu Lahab, she said to Muhammad, I think that your Satan has forsaken you, she was not lying. Right? I know they man. I was joking, man. Come on. All right? So, she was not lying, guys. Because every prophet, including Muhammad, his sahib, his companion, is al -abiyad. It's Satan, man. Muhammad has, had his, has his own Satan in the form of al -Abiyad. Right? He is the companion of the Prophet, Sahib al-Anbiya in Arabic, said, I and for him. So he, became, so he came to the Prophet and found him in the house of Al-Safa. When he, the Prophet, turned, al abiyads devil, Satan, stood up in the form of Jibreel. See it? So al abyad is always with Muhammad. Friends, he saw Raj Jibreel to communicate to him. Right? So Jibreel came down 
and put his hand between him and the prophet and pushed him al gently. By this he was thrust away from Mecca and landed in the first parts of India. People of India, take your suitcases, hide your women, take your women and children and leave India immediately. You have a guy called al Abiyad hiding in India. Allahu Akbar. Take beer. Take beer. This must be true. Right? There is a demon called al Abiyad among you. Right? Famous biographer of the Prophet. Al Ali B. Ibrahim Al Halabi writes Some of the commentators have mentioned that the Prophet had an enemy from among the demons. Well, there's nothing called demons in Islam. He I think he made a typo. He meant to say the jinns. Demon of the jinn. Demons of the jinns. <laughs> Liar. Whose name was Al Abiyad. Again. So, how many reports do I have to? Read for you guys that Muhammad's companion was the devil himself who was coming to him in the form of Jibreel. Playing hide and seek with Muhammad, controlling Muhammad, giving him satanic verses. And he used to appear to him in the image of Jibreel. Uh oh. Uh oh. One may object that it entails distrust in the first day of revelation. My response to him is that Allah had bestowed on the Prophet the necessary knowledge by which he would dis disconcern between Jibreel and this devil. His devil, who was other than the devil at the chain, that he submitted to the Prophet and became a Muslim. So. This guy later became a Muslim. The Satan of Muhammad became a Muslim. <laughs> this guy is making it even more beautiful, man. Guys, guys, guys. Come on, man. Leave this satanic cult, man. Do you have any Muslim? It's getting hot in here. With Al Abiyad at your side. And Muhammad burning in hellfire according to the Quran. Chapter 15, Ayah 42. Muhammad is under the authority of Satan. He became the deviant and he's burning in hellfire according to the Quran. Not my, this is not my Quran, this is your Quran. Blame Allah. For allowing Satan to control him by Satan. Any Muslim. Any Muslim who will say this is a lie. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Call me. Refute me. Call me. Do you have any question, guys? Is there any stars? Any Muslim? Do you have questions guys, people in the chat? Do you have questions? Now is the time to ask. We just finished our teaching. Man, we are already live for 2 hours and 20 minutes. Time flies, man. Wow, 2 hours and 20 minutes. Do we have any questions guys? Do we have any Muslims? Do we have any Ustaz or Imam who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? I mean, come on, man. Muslims say 
Islam is the biggest religion, the largest religion, the fastest growing religion. There are more than 1.4 billion Muslims, as they say, claim. That's what they said. Don't you have just one Imam who has the courage and the knowledge to call me, to refute me, to spank me and my career? Silence me. Muhammad Hijab, Mimi Hijab, silence me. Where is Mimi Hijab? Where is Shamsi? Where is Ali Dawa? Ali Dawa. Mayday, Mayday. Mimi Hijab. Mayday, Mayday. I challenge you to refute me. Mayday, Mayday. Hey, Andrew, my friend, you came in late, man. What's wrong, man? Andrew, Andrew Martin. Are you the same Andrew who also goes to Sam Shamoun? Did you become a Christian by yet, my friend? Did you already took your Christian <laughs> Shahada? You're sick? Oh, man. Guys, pray for our brother Andrew Martin. Did you become a Christian, my friend? Are you a Christian now? Did you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, my friend? Okay, so you're still not... You're still learning, right? Pray for brother Andrew Martin. Maybe someday he'll become a Christian again. He is really a nice guy. He's always here. He goes to Sam Shimon, to Christian Prince. Pray him. Keep him in your prayers, guys. Be healthy again soon again, my friend. Any Muslim? Any question? Any Ustaz, any Imam, any Sheikh. Huh? <clears throat> Let's see if this guy, he, the one who called me. Let's see if he's going to pick up the phone. I think his name is Muhammad. Let's see if Muhammad will pick up. Hello. Hey, my friend. How are you? Thank you for. Uh, I was watching your show. Yeah. And, uh, of course, many points. I. Uh, yeah. Did you Did you watch the entire show, my friend? Since the time that I called you, yes. Okay. Okay. What do you think about today's live show? I'll be honest with you. A lot of the things that you mentioned are the same reasons why I'm not a Sunni anymore. Really? Really. Why? I did the research myself and obviously I encountered the same things you encountered. Yeah. Well, hopefully not today only. Hopefully you encountered it way longer before. But maybe you learned some, you know, you learned some new things today from some mm -hmm. of the Christians here. Yeah. And uh, what well, do you think? Do you um, think that uh, the cousin of Muhammad Ibn Abbas is he a liar? A liar? Uh, we have some narrations in our reports that um, he's not. He's not necessarily truthful. So the cousin I, of Muhammad, who, Muhammad called him his cousin, the Sheikh of Al Islam, right? Do you remember that? So uh, are you telling me the cousin of Muhammad Ibn Abbas is a liar for saying? that the devil came to Muhammad and you see it in front of you, right? It's on the screen. A devil, Ibn Abbas saying, a devil called al Abiyad. I read, yeah, I, I read it, I read it. Came to the Prophet in the form of Jibril, giving him the satanic verses. I mean, how much more proof do you want? Is Ibn Abbas a liar? Or I mean, I can show you this? the satanic verses in the Tabari as well, if you want that. Yeah, so... Are, but, they, are, uh, are, are my those sect does early, not accept that story. My friend, are those early scholars, do you know Islam better than those early scholars? Uh, I have my scholars. I don't follow those scholars. So you, th so you claim that Ibn Abbas is a liar. That's what you're saying, right? Basically. I mean, I believe many, many ahadith, many ahadith were fabricated. So yes. This, is, this is not hadith. hadith. This is not hadith. This is tafsir, tafsir for the Quran. Or all right, do you have a tafsir from Shia books that it has an authentic chain, or do you not? To be honest with you, I don't really. Uh, uh, I I, knew I don't that go to Shia. No, but I don't have a But with but, that. I mean, what is more higher than Ibn Abbas? 
Was there uh, something uh, was there something called Shia in the time of Ibn Abbas? Uh no. While he was still alive? Yes, there was actually. There was something called Shia in the time of uh while Ibn, Ibn Abbas. Abbas was still alive? Yeah, yeah, there was. There was. They were called in the Shia time, Was was Muhammad alive at that time? Uh no, yes, yes, Ibn Abbas lived when Muhammad no, no. was alive. I'm saying Shia or the, the, the uh, I guess you could say that the term referring to a certain specific group did not occur until after the death of Muhammad. Yeah, so it, it came life. after Muhammad, right? When Ali, when Ali, right? They that wanted Ali, like, yeah. when Ali, uh, you know, Muslims didn't want to pay tribute to Abu Bakr, right? So it was after, much later, right? So Ibn Abbas uh, was alive. Yes, right? I agree. I, I yeah. believe he was so, alive. I, so why are you Shia why are you calling my friend? Why are you calling the cousin of Muhammad a liar? Come on, man. He's a family of Muhammad, man. Don't you uh, Shia Muslims say? Don't you Shia Muslims say that not the family all the family of Muhammad? Show me. Can you show me one Shia high high scholar of Shia say that Ibn Abbas is a liar? There are there uh, there's disagreement. Show me, my friend. Show me. A Shia well, I mean, scholar who's saying that Ibn Abbas is a liar and a deceiver. The cousin of Muhammad. You want an alim as in like high high up? Because I don't think I can get that uh, yeah, personally. You, you, you follow a Siddiq, right? That's one of your highest Imams, right? A Sadiq? Or Sadiq, yeah. Sadiq, Siddiq, whatever what his name is. Um, can you show me one source from him saying that Ibn Abbas is a liar? I don't have a hadith with me, but uh, okay. So you don't have so you, you don't have proof hold that on. Ibn Abbas is a liar. Hold on, hold on. I myself, from my books, do, I don't have the reference with me. But mm -hmm. if you're concerning Sunni books, then I would simply just say that well, as long as they're not in my books, if those are hadith, I'm not authenticated. This is not books, hadith, my reason. friend. This is tafsir. A tafsir is based off a hadith. That's that's majority of it. I mean, they don't just they don't just come up with their own opinion. Well. Unless you're right? Sunni, then yeah, you usually so, do. It's, but, it's the cousin of Muhammad. I mean, come on, my friend. I'm not going. Our, I'm not going to, uh, to to a Christian. This is in this is yeah, an yeah, yeah. Islamic source, right? So can I can I when it comes to a hadith, we don't just take it from anybody just because he's from oh cousin of Muhammad or he's cousin of whoever. Yeah. If you can show me a hadith or this hadith or any hadith by one of our imams authentically attributed to one of our imams then i'd be more than happy to accept my friend i'm showing you for ibn abbas what's wrong with you ibn man? abbas is not my imam ibn abbas is one of the sahaba's family don't you say like we i don't, said don't, don't you shia or, or say that the family of ahlul bayt they are ahlul bayt the, not uh, all of them though not uh, no, not all of them so ahlul bayt ahlul bayt guys ahlul bayt is means family of muhammad Ibn yes. Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, he's Ahlul Bayt. Now Ahlul Bayt is, are not infallible. You Shia say Ahlul we Bayt say are our infallible. Imams, uh, have you heard of the 14 infallibles? Uh, 14 infallibles? Those are the only infallibles yeah. or the Masumin yeah. from the family of Muhammad, which includes Muhammad yeah. وسلم, himself, his daughter Fatima and the 12 Imams. If you can yeah. bring me a reference, Directly attributed by one of them in which the Imam quotes the Prophet or he says it himself, then I will accept it. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question, my friend. Do you believe that Muhammad, if he wants to enter Jannah, he needs to ask his daughter Fatima, Fatima. to enter Jannah? He needs her permission to enter Jannah. Is that true? Is that what you believe? We do have that hadith, yes. Okay. So you believe that's true? I said we do have that hadith. Okay. So guys, did you just did you just heard what he just, just said? According to the Shia, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, needs to ask permission from his so-called daughter, Fatima Zahra, that's what they call her. He needs he needs to ask permission from his own daughter to enter Jannah. Wow. Do you have the hadith with you though? Because I'm not. No, I, I don't have. I, 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 I don't have the hadith, but I saw a video from Shia. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll, from I'll have Shia, to check that out later Shia myself. imam saying that. Well, we don't accept just the word of any random turban head on on the on the you know on a platform. If he brings the reference and he and he gives the authentication with the chain of narration, then I'd be more than happy to look at it. But 
besides that, I can't take word for word just from any random person who's on a mimbar. Yeah. But you know, my friend, you are basically putting uh, the daughter of Muhammad even high on a higher level than Muhammad. I mean, we have many hadith that obviously suggest otherwise. Yeah. But don't you see the problem here, my friend? Don't you see uh, something fishy? I mean, now the Prophet is on a lower level than his own daughter. I mean, we don't see you're, that. You're, you're, you're basically making her divine, man. She's divine. You know, so, Sunnis say the same thing about it. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, and, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and what about, what about the Quran? What about the Quran? The Quran says that you have to worship Muhammad. Isn't that shirk? Uh, we have many so you 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 Shia you, so you Shia you worship the family of Muhammad, but the Quran. No, we do not. Yes, you do, and uh, and the Quran. Don't Would say like no. Explain don't my, my friend, don't my say beliefs? no. Don't say no. And according well, to chapter I've, forty-eight, I've ayah nine. You read that? Yes. You, every Muslim needs to glorify and worship Muhammad. You have to do tasbih to the apostle. And have you read a, a, a Shia tafsir on that ayah? Because I know you read a Sunni tafsir on that ayah. You need tafsir for the ayah while well, the proof is in if front the, of if the, We don't take our own interpretation from the Quran. This is not interpretation, my friend. Don't say it's interpretation. The, the proof is in front of you. It says you have to respect and honor and, and worship the, the Prophet. The what is the to, Yeah, you tell me. What is, what is you, tasbih? Bring, no, no, what you is, have the proof, you pro, have the burden of proof. What is you tasbih? Tasbih, you have the burden of proof. What is tasbih? The proof is in front of you. It means glorify him. Glorify who? Where's glorification? Yeah, you, you tell the, me. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. What is glorification? You and tell I'm, me. I'm going to quote, I'm going to, I'm going to quote the video guys, you made yesterday. Guys, guys, he needs to tell up. us what glorification means. Okay. What so the, the definition that you showed yesterday, yeah? I wasn't watching the video at the time, but now I, I'm going to correct it because I, I saw the video myself after the call. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to say you deceived intentionally, but you did not mention it. What I did I What did I not mention? What did I not mention? When you looked up the word glorify, you yeah. read the first definition, but you didn't read the second definition. Why didn't you do that? I said praise and you said doesn't mean that. But what's, even though it's OK, what is praise? Alhamd, what is Alhamd? Alhamd. By the way, do you know what tasbih is? Yeah. Yeah, it's glorification, glorifying, glorification, glorifying and God, my friend, glorifying. Hold on. Who said that specifically is reserved for Allah? Glorifying, glorifying and praising is not not for Allah. I never said that. I said, when I, you say glorification, question, I you say, praise. do you say in Islam, Alhamdulillah or Alhamdu Muhammad? Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Muhammad Guys, did you hear? Itself, did you hear? The name Muhammad itself. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. The name Muhammad itself. Do you know the meaning of the name Muhammad? Because we believe Allah. No, you gave tell me. Muhammad I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. What is what we is the meaning? Allah gave Muhammad his name, and the name Muhammad or Ahmed, as Allah says in the Quran, means yeah. if you actually look at the meaning in Arabic, it means the praiseworthy. Why would such a name? The praise Allah is the praiseworthy. You know why? And you Muhammad know why? Is a name, you know why? Why does the, the name exist? You know why? Because because Muhammad wanted to elevate himself to the level of Allah. But Thank Muhammad you. didn't name himself Muhammad. Yeah. He didn't name himself Muhammad. Yes, he did. His real name he is Qatham. Himself Muhammad? Qatham is his real name. Yes. It's a and divine that, title. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said his divine title? Yes. And so I'm assuming his, his father's name is not Abdullah either. No. Every John Doe in Islam is called Abdullah. And so his grandfather's name is not Abdul Muttalib, yeah? So we're now going to deny all the I don't know. That, that I don't know. I think his, his name is... But every John Doe... Is called Abdullah. It means the slave of Allah. My friend, yes, yes. if my friend, no one in Islam can prove that Abdullah is the real father of Muhammad. But that's off topic. Let us go back. Guys, if you have proof guys, of you see, he wants happy. he wants to go off topic. My friend, I'm asking you. My you friend, the, the proof name, is in front Muhammad of you. Is not his name. You said Muhammad praise is not his name, and Muhammad worship is for God, my friend. It's not for your prophet. You are okay, so, you are committing shirk. And we know so what shirk at, is. Okay, so do you want me to show you shirk from the Bible? Because I actually had a verse about where one Forget the about the Bible. Of Jesus my friend, you Muslims. Well, why are we about the why, Bible? Why, why you want to go to the corrupted Bible? You Muslims claim the Bible's corrupt. Don't go, don't go off topic. My but friend, it's your reference. my it's your friend, reference. my friend. You believe in it? I have to use it as a proof against you. I can't, I can't use it. I'm not using a proof against me. I'm no, using no, a proof no, against no, you. No, 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 no. If you believe the shirk, can you say, Quran, can you say to can everybody use? that you have to glorify Muhammad? Can you prove to everybody that you have to glorify Muhammad? Did I lie? In with my praise? yesterdays. Yeah. With praise? No, no, glorify. 
Praise, yes. Praise. Pra yeah. Praise glorify. Do you see the screen? Do I see it right now? Do you see the screen? Is it the same definition you brought up? Chapter 48, chapter 48, I and 9. Not my translation, this is your translation. Well, actually, I would deny that because... Look at the screen. I'm sure, I'm sure okay. a Sunni scholar translated this. Sunni Shia doesn't matter. This is Quran. But to, to us, it really does because we believe Sunnis go to hell. I don't think that's a pretty big. I don't think that's a pretty. Yeah, pretty we, big know, we know. That you we know. We know. We know you Sunni Sunni Shia. You curse each other left and right. We know. We know. No, no need to mention. We know. So which which uh, which sort was it again? You said. Look at the screen, my friend. Look in YouTube. I, I don't have the screen in front of me. I have the Quran. Chapter in front forty-eight. Of me. You know Arabic. Forty-eight. Do you know Arabic? Uh, not as no, not as no? well as you would assume. Can you can Maybe you not. read can you read Arabic? Uh, someone you said it's which ayah? Forty-eight, ayah nine. Ayah nine. Yes. Here we have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لتؤمنون بالله والرسول والتعزر ورسوله ورسوله yeah. ورسوله you don't have to say ورسوله by the way yeah. it says رسوله but okay continue لتؤمنون بالله والرسوله there you go yeah. but ورسوله also it's also correct ورسوله وتعزروه وتعقروه وتسبهوه بقرة no 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 my, no no my friend وتوقروه not not what you said read at least oh, yeah, read your Quran yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. وتوقر, uh, sorry. وتعز... وت... listen listen it's وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسب وتسبهوه بقرة وأسيلة I told you I'm, my Arabic is not great so okay. I mean I don't know why you're so a Christian you. needs to teach you your your Quran okay وتعزروه وتوقروه توقروه وتسبهوه الرسول وتسبحوه الرسول بكرة وأصيلة right so you have to worship and glorify Muhammad thank you oof 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 why why my friend do you need to worship Muhammad does it, it say worship Yes, glor you keep saying glor what, I, is I what is glorify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is glorification? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is no glorification? Us? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So this, so to make sure there's no difference between us, do you have Lisan and Arab, which was the one of the most ancient Arabic dictionaries? Do you have that? So you can look. My friend, the I'm an Arab. I don't need dictionary, man. What's wrong with you, man? You don't need a dictionary. No, so, I don't. I'm an Arab. So you're so you're a scholar <laughs> of Arabic. I know what does Arabic mean. I don't need to be a scholar to be a. Understanding what tasbih means. Come on, every Arabic knows what tasbih means. It's glorification. And, you said it means and glorification. The, this is your tra translation, not mine. Look at any translation. Let us go to any translation. The one let I us have go. Says praise, but let us go. Let's see. Let us go to Sahih International. Wow, what a great one. Yeah. Look at this one. It says respect the prophet and exalt Allah. Look at the look at the false translation. Look at the false translation, my friends. Did I say that though? I didn't say that, did I? No, this is Sahih International. Filthy liars and scumbag. You see that, guys? Obviously, they're gonna lie. Yeah. I mean, so but it exalt Allah. What is exalting, guys? Look, they have, to, they have to put Allah here. You well, see that? There is nothing called Allah. It says, "Latumini billahi wa rasulihi." And everything, guys, everything that comes la after the last person, according to Arabic grammar rules, counts for the last guy, and in this case, the Rasul. So you have to honor and respect and glorify who? The Prophet. Right? I agree. So you have but to not, not exalt not Allah. This is false translation. You have to exalt the Prophet. What is exalting the prophet means, guys? Anyone who knows English in the chat? What does exalting mean in English? What is exalting, guys? So, you don't want to go to the... Because I had I originally called you to have questions about the Bible, not about the Quran. No, no, I'm not going to change topic, my friend, today. Well, I told you, you said after the show, and I said I'd be more than willing to call you after the show, so you don't have to worry about changing. It's topics. worship, right? Thank you. So, exalting, glorifying, praising is an act of worship. It's worship. 
High rank, exactly. Leveling him up. Making Muhammad divine. So my friend, my question. This is the topic. Why do you worship your prophet? I would never worship the prophet because the prophet said not to worship him. Well, the Quran says you have to worship him. Is the Quran the word of Allah? The direct word of Allah. Thank you. So your Allah commands you to worship the prophet. Why are you why are you a mushrik, my friend? Why are you committing shirk by worshiping Muhammad and you have to uh, it is in command. Shirk like, like Suleiman, this is like a Solomon. command from Allah to worship Muhammad. Earlier you said you respect your prophets, but you're claiming number one, my I worship my, my prophet, which my is friend, wrong. Go study the Quran, come back, okay? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. no, no you, know, you know, you can't refute me. You can't answer me why you have to worship Muhammad. Then, you know, what do we, why, why are we wasting time? So you don't accept tafsir, yeah? That's fine. I don't accept tafsir. Tafsir? Tafsir of the ayah. I mean, this is crystal. Why do we have to go to the tafsir guide? Is the gra gra grammar rules so, not so bad? Hold on. The Bible's clear too? Or do I have to go to tafsir as well? <laughs> Or do I have to interpret it myself, yeah? There's no need for interpretation. The proof is in front of you, man. There's no need to go to any tafsir. The proof is in front of you. According to this ayah, you have to glorify and worship Muhammad every morning and evening. You need tafsir for this? Not tafsir for what you're saying, because obviously it doesn't say worship at all. The word's not there. Uh, glorification it. what does it glorification mean does not necessitate worship but again you can keep saying that it's fine i mean I, now tasbih I'm, I'm guys, you guys he's, he doesn't know arabic look look at this guy my friend you sound like a very respectful guy but at the same time you're calling the quran lying you're calling the arabic quran lying you're calling me a liar an arabic speaker which you are not you're calling me a liar. a liar, and you are li and you don't understand the meaning of glorification, right? Praise and worship—it's an act of worship, my friend. Come on, you're wasting you're my time, my friend. I didn't call you; you called me. You, you're you're calling me a liar, and people in front of everybody. You're, you're calling your own Quran lying. Did not say it was a lie. You were putting yes, words in my, my friend, mouth. Go I mean, study. Me, go study the real meaning of. Out of That's respect for you. Come back, okay? Out of respect for you. See you later, my friend. Come on. And I'll, guys, I don't want to hang up on him, really. But enough is enough, man. This is a waste of time. Complete waste of time. Either you're going to swallow and deal with it that Allah is commanding you to glorify the messenger, honor him. Respect him, assist him, and glorify who? Him, Muhammad, the messenger, at early dawn and the close of day. Every morning and evening. Bukratan wasila. Right? Let me play it, guys. لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا. وتسبحوه. That you may believe in Allah and His Messenger and right. support Him and honor Him and praise Him morning and evening. إن الذين يبايعونك. He's going to the next one. You see it? Glorify him. Tasbih. I mean, come on, man. You uh, wasting my time, man. Calling me a liar. This guy doesn't even speak Arabic, man. He doesn't know the Quran of his Allah in Arabic. And you wanna go? In, you you want to try to refute Rob Christian? Clear shirk, man. You have to glorify Muhammad. Proof is in front of you. Any Imam? Is there any Ustaz? Don't send me potatoes, please. Don't send me people who don't even know the Quran in Arabic. You're going to call me at least, at least my friend. Learn your Quran in Arabic. Don't tell me about translations. All the translations are liars. 
Liars, man. Don't you Muslims always say, go to the Arabic? People in the chat, don't you hear Muslims always say, always go back to the Arabic? Well, I'm going to the Arabic. Waste of time, man. Don't send me your uh, weakest guys, please. Is there any Ustaz who can answer the shirk in this ayah? Why are you Muslims mushrikun billah? Why are you mushrikun? Why are you committing shirk? Why are you doing tasbih, glorification to your Prophet? And you dare, you dare to call us mushrikun? You dare, you have no shame, you have no dignity calling us pagans? If this, this isn't paganism, then I don't know the meaning of paganism, guys. Shame on you. Look at your own broken mirror first. Deal with it. Swallow it. Shirk is in your Quran. You are commanded to worship Muhammad. What about this? Guys, let's say this is this ayah, Allah made a mistake. Let's, let's say that. Right? Allah made a mistake, guys. Allah made, let's say Allah made a mistake. Allah forget to eat his seven ajwa, like his prophet. Right? Allah forget to eat his ajwa. When he gave this ayah to the Quran. Let's say it was al abyad who gave this ayah to Muhammad. Okay? What about this one? Let me look it up for you. And what is the ayah? Wait. Just a second, guys. Let me look it up for you, okay? Mm. What was that eye again? Oh. Let me go back. I want to go to 34. 34 was it, yeah. Not this one. 34. Yeah, this is the ayah, guys. I mean, if chapter 48, ayah 9 is from Satan. Let's say it's from Satan, right? Allah made a mistake. He allowed Satan to give the Quranic ayah to Muhammad. What about this one, guys? I'll look what Allah is saying. And when we said unto the angels, do sujood, prostrate yourselves to Adam. Allah asking for shirk again. Is this an ayah from Allah or Satan Muslims? Why is Allah asking this, the angels to do sujood, act of worship, prostrate to Adam. That doesn't make sense. Disaster on top of disaster. And the good guy is Satan for refusing. He didn't want to do that. So who is the bad guy? Allah. Who is the good guy? Satan. He doesn't want to commit shirk. Satan doesn't want to bow down and prostrate, do sujood to Adam. How many more eyes do you want do you want as proof that Islam is nothing but a pagan cult? Huh? Right? Allah is asking for shirk. Is jidu? Prostrate. Sujood. Act of worship. How many more ayahs do you want, guys, from the Quran? This is Quran. Huh? What a shame. You call this religion? Guys, think uh, 
it's time guys it's time we are almost three hours live three hours this is my longest live show ever did you did you guys enjoy today's live show huh are you enjoying yourselves guys i'm really becoming sad that muslims need to accept this shirk it's sad man it's humiliating to call this a religion. This is nothing but a satanic cult. This is not a religion. Yeah, that went fast. Almost three hours, guys. Man, man, man. I thought Christian Prince was the only guy who could uh, manage to get three hours. Three hours? Man. Muslims, you need to deal with the fact that Muhammad has Satan always with him. Right? Then we have a Shia guy calling Ibn Abbas a liar. How dare you, man? You call yourself a Muslim? The cousin of Muhammad saying Al Abyad came to the Prophet in the form of Jibreel. These are not my own words. These are the words of Ibn Abbas. Right? Al Abyad. And what did Allah say in the Quran, guys? Huh? We showed you from chapter 15. Chapter 15. I have 42 and 43. Lo, as for my slaves, thou has no power. So Allah is talking to Satan over any of them. Save such of the fraud as follow thee. So here Allah, Muhammad, busting himself. Clearly Allah didn't kept his promise. Allowing Satan to control Muhammad. Taking over the authority over Muhammad. And what does Allah say? And lo, for all such, hell will be the promised place. My friends, Muslims, your prophet is burning in hellfire because Satan took control and authority over your prophet. Giving him the satanic verses. Making him look bad. Walking like a crazy majnoon. Possessed by jinn for at least six months according to Sahih al-Bukhari from the mouth of Aisha please leave this satanic cult come back to Jesus I invite you back home accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior don't worship the dead prophet don't glorify Muhammad it's shirk it's blasphemy it's an insult for the true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's an insult to worship and glorify Muhammad. Please come back home. Guys, thank you for watching. It was a long day. It was a long teaching, I know. But we have to do this to help these poor victims. Guys, don't forget to download this video. Cut parts that you like or want to use. Don't also don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button and click on the not notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Thank you for watching guys. God bless you. God bless your families, your loved ones. Keep us in your prayers. Keep supporting our work. Pray for the warriors. Pray for me. Pray for Christian Prince. Pray for David Wood. Pray for Sam Shamon. Pray for all the warriors. Pray for everyone who is in need. Stay safe. Share what you have learned with Muslims, guys. Share it. These people are in need. We are not doing this for ourselves, guys. We are doing this for the truth. Because everyone needs to accept the truth everyone is in need in jesus we need jesus 
in these dark times. God, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Maybe we will be hated. Maybe we will be insulted. I receive insults every day, guys. But Jesus said, you will be cursed. You will be persecuted in my name. And it's an honor to be cursed and insulted in the name of our Christ. It's an honor to be blessed. It's a blessing. I don't care if Muslims curse me and insult me left and right. I don't really care. All right? Thanks, thank the admins. Thank you. Pray for our admins. They are doing always an amazing job. Thank you for watching, guys. Keep us in your prayers. Islam is false. Jesus is Lord. And every knee will bow and proclaim that he is Lord. Thank you for watching and God bless.